Maybe you're thinking of getting a dog and you want to know how much it's going to cost you. Maybe you've already got a dog and you want to know how much other people spend on theirs. Maybe you're just nosy. Any of that is fine. Stick around because I have never done this calculation before, but I've just sat down and worked out everything that we've spent on our Whippet Jess in 2022 and I'm going to break it down for you. There'll be some nice little graphs and charts and I'm going to take you through from the most expensive thing to the least expensive thing um, in that order. I'll start off by telling you a bit about Jess because I think it's important to have a bit of background. I think this is one of those how long is a piece of a string questions. Everyone will be spending different amounts of money. The things that's important to know are Jess is a whippet, a pedigree whippet. She's eight years old so she's kind of getting on a bit. We're beginning to look at like senior food and stuff, joint stuff, I don't know. She's been in really good health until around this time last year when she developed some tummy problems, which has definitely, definitely made a big impact on our spending this year. I'll explain it as we go along. She's a lovely, nervous little soul. Everyone thinks that their dog is the best dog. I am no exception. She's just wonderful. And any amount of money that we spent on her would be absolutely fine by me. <laughs> I do not regret her a single penny. She's the absolute best thing in my life. Another caveat will be, I guess, because of the nature of like my job and our social media presence, we're really, really fortunate to be gifted things sometimes by brands and stuff. Um, and that does mean that we have spent less in certain areas than we would do normally. What I'll do is I'll talk you through the things that we're using and let you know, just make sure that you're aware that that is kind of missing from the summary. So to begin with, the biggest expense for us, and I suspect that this is the same for lots of people, is um, insurance. We pay a monthly rate for our insurance. I had a look earlier, it doesn't actually change if you do it annually, so it makes sense for us to keep paying it monthly. It seems to me like a lot. <laughs> Um, I think that's probably because we've made a few claims and because Jess is eight. So I think as they get older, like this has increased every year. At the moment, our insurance is costing us £75 a month, which is equivalent to £900 a year. It's a lot, for sure. We're with Tesco for our insurance. And other than the fact that it's so expensive, we have no complaints. They've been great. We've made a number of claims over the years. They've always paid out. They've been really smooth to deal with. We've never had any issues with them. So no complaints at all. I think they're probably great. The main thing that the insurance covers and the most important thing for us is uh, her healthcare. So when we've had big pricey unexpected vet bills they've paid out and that's been brilliant. Um, there's been a lot of that this year which I'll talk you through in a minute. I hate to think about this but it also covers if she dies I think it helps us with the costs associated with that um, which I imagine would be a load off your mind at the time. And yeah insurance. It's a good thing to have. Um, we have thought in the past about putting that like money aside every month and just building up a fund ourselves. The biggest medical bills that we've had to date have been like a few grand, maybe 3,000 pounds or something, which is like, it's a lot of money. Um, but imagine if you had a vet bill that was a lot more than that, like you'd be in a lot of trouble if you didn't have insurance. So um, I think until we're in a different financial situation where we've got a lot more money in the bank, that's not something that we'll be looking at doing, especially like as she's getting older and therefore higher risk for certain things. We've looked at changing our insurance provider this year. Just be aware if you're thinking of getting a dog that the provider you start with is probably the one you're gonna stick with because when you move, they don't cover pre-existing conditions. So now that Jess has had problems with her tummy, if we changed insurance provider, they wouldn't cover anything to do with her tummy. Um, so yeah, that's just something to watch out for when you're signing up for your first one. I think four years ago when we first started paying insurance for Jess, it was £25 a month and it's now 75 so it does shoot upwards as they get older, I think. Anyway, that's our biggest expense. Now on to our second biggest expense, which is vet bills. We've been to the vet quite a lot this year. We have a wonderful vet. <laughs> we love them so much. They've been, they've helped us through a whole bunch of things. It's been great to like have them there and be able to rely on them. Vets are the best. Don't talk badly to your vet. That does mean that we've paid a lot in vet bills. So um, some of it's been paid back by insurance. I'll describe that all to you in a minute. What we've had vet bills for is we had quite a lot of tests at the beginning of the year. Um, I made a video about this, but Jess had some problems with her digestion. She was quite unwell for a while. She was losing a lot of weight really rapidly and it was a really scary time for us. We now know that it was kind of chicken that she's allergic to, but the cost of doing all that was quite a lot. A lot of tests. She went under anesthesia a few times. She also had a problem with her toe, which we went to the vet for. And I think she went under that time as well. Maybe she had her teeth cleaned that time too. Anyway, a whole bunch of vet care. We love it. We want her to be in the best health possible. In total, we spent 2,006 pounds and 49 pence on vet bills in 2022. 
we spent some last December as well, I think, but I haven't counted that. So £2,006 and 49 pence on vet bills. But we made insurance claims and we got £1,434.18 of that back through our insurance, which means that our total that we spent on vet bills this year was £572.31. £2,000 £2, would have felt like a lot, but £572.31, I think, like, great. I'm happy with that. You can't put a price on her health. Right, the next biggest cost, food and treats. To be honest, I was expecting this to be right at the top. I hadn't realized how much the insurance was if you added it all together. Obviously I see it coming out of my account every month, but it's a lot. Anyway, food and treats. Now, I haven't separated this out because um, I can't. Uh, I don't keep my receipts and I buy them at the same time together. And it's actually come to a lot less than I was expecting. It's been a weird one this year because of the exclusion diet we were doing. Um, she's been on sort of vet recommended foods for at least the first six months of the year. And we're just trying to like settle into a rhythm with her now and find a food that's gonna work for her that she likes to eat and that's gonna be good for her tummy. So in a usual, like in previous years, we've um, fed her Harrington's, a mixture of like the kibble and the wet food and she's loved it. And then we would have had the same costs every month because we were feeding the same thing. This year we fed her like maybe four or five different things over the course of the year. Yeah, this is another place where we're really lucky to be sent things sometimes by some really lovely brands. So that supplements, I think we would be spending more if that wasn't the case. So the total we spent on food and treats was £452. That comes to £37.60 a month, which is I think less than we've spent in previous years, which I wasn't expecting because some of that vet food was quite expensive. But as I said, like this has been an unusual year. Now that we know what's up with her tummy, we'll be looking at finding a new food and like a better routine for the next year. Treats wise, I'd say we buy quite a lot of treats for her because we use them a lot when we're doing like photography and videography for our Instagram. Um, we use them for a little bit of training when we're out and about. Normally we buy like wags, treats. Sometimes we'll buy some stuff at a market that we find. We also put stuff in our groceries. So like we'll get her cucumber. We feed her quite a lot of cheese. I haven't included those costs here either just because it's impossible to extract them from our grocery bill. And we also eat the cheese and the cucumber, but like she does get quite a lot of food from our supermarket shops as well. So I do think that's probably a bit of an underestimate, but that's what I could find in my banking app, uh, £452 on food and treats. The next biggest cost for us this year was dog sitting, which is an exciting one. So for a bit of context, we um, have never had a dog sitter for Jess. We don't currently have a dog sitter for Jess. We don't have a dog walker. Um, Jess is a really anxious dog, which means that we are always here with her. There's always somebody at home with her or she's always out and about with us. She's le never left on her own. We just haven't managed to make that work for us yet. We probably need to try a bit harder. Like it's a big goal of ours for next year is to be able to leave her for periods of time by herself. It's better for her because I think she'd be happier here on her own if she was comfortable. And it's better for us because it means we can go and, you know, go out for dinner and, you know, it's just better all round. But we had an engagement party in August and um, we did find someone to look after the dog which was great. Jess had a really good time and it just worked out really well. So we're looking forward to trying to find like some kind of regular situation for her this year. A dog walker, a dog sitter, maybe a house sitter. Once our house is sittable, we're in the middle of a big renovation. So I think this cost will go up for us next year. I hope so. If it goes up, it means that something's going right. Um, maybe I'll make another one of these videos and you can check back in and see how we've done. <laughs> But anyway, so the cost for this year was £140, but I don't think that that reflects what most people are probably spending on like a regular dog sitting and walking routine. Next up, medication. This is the first year that Jess has had any kind of medication. She's been on two medications this year. The first one is she's on um, antidepressants as a kind of anti-anxiety medication, which she started maybe two months ago and has been kind of it's been incredible really. She's just a lot more relaxed. Things like, the things that we've really noticed are like, normally she sort of tucks her feet in all the time. She doesn't expose her tummy. She doesn't like fully relax. Since she's taken it, she's been lying on her back with her legs in the air. Like we see other people's whippets do. And it's just lovely to see her kind of let go of that bit of anxiety that stops her from fully relaxing and being herself. So that's been quite, extraordinary. Again, like you can't put a price on that really. Then we've also got like a sedative medication that we give her when there's fireworks. We had 24 days of fireworks in a row in October 
November time. It was awful. It's it's just paralyzing for her. Like she's in total fear all the time. And it was getting to the point where when it started getting dark in the evening, she started getting fearful and trembly and she was just so unhappy and we were so unhappy. So our vet prescribed her some medication to help her with it. And it's been amazing. Again, like can't put a price on that. I would say it's only been about six weeks that we've been giving her the medication so far. Um, and it's so far cost us 51 pounds. Again, no idea where like next year will take us, whether she'll still be on medication or not, like what that will look like. But um, for now, I'd say that that was so well worth it. And I'm really, really pleased and relieved that that's where we've got to this year. Next <laughs> is toys. <laughs> now this one, like, you're gonna look at this and think this is a bit sad, okay? We spent 20 pounds on toys for her this year, which I think like, you know, we've got friends whose dogs are like chewers and they get through toys a lot and obviously like 20 pounds isn't that much money. But Jess is not super interested in toys. Like they're just not really her jam. Um, a bit more since she's been a bit more relaxed recently, but generally speaking, she's not the most fussed. So so yeah, we're just, we're just not going out and seeing toys and being like, oh, she'd love that. We'll get one of those for her. That's just not, doesn't really happen. But we are also fortunate to be sent lots of things by brands. And one of the things that we've had quite a lot of this year is toys. So having said that, like there are a lot of toys around in our house she's just not playing with them that often and i don't think that it's a cost certainly in previous years it's not something that we've spent a lot of money on the one thing we did buy her this year that 20 pounds i think was on some olive wood chews because in the first half of the year when when she was on that really restrictive diet while we were trying to settle her tummy um she couldn't have normal chews so we did buy her some of those wood ones they were great she really loved them thoroughly recommend those but yes that was what that cost was the other thing i would say about toys is you don't need to buy them. Like one of the things that Jess has the most fun with is I get a loo roll tube and I stuff it with loo paper and then I put some treats in and fold over the edges and she has to kind of tear it apart, like shredding paper into a cardboard box. She loves that. You don't have to spend loads of money or we don't have to spend loads of money on dog toys. You might not do either. I know that for some dogs who are like power chewers, then maybe um, it is more of an expense, but it's all a sliding scale, isn't it? And then lastly, the last little cost on here is grooming and it's seven pounds. And that is, I think, like a flea treatment, which we just buy from Wilco and uh, toothpaste. <laughs> because we brush her teeth. With her grooming, we do, we have a Dremel that we use. We bought that last year. It might've cost us 20 quid or something. We also have nail clippers, a few pairs. Again, like under 20 pounds, I think. Um, so that's not expenses that we've made this year, but um, they might need replacing at some point and it is an expense that we would have paid last year. Um, so it's not that we have no grooming costs. We've got everything we need. We also use a grooming glove and stuff. I've made a video about grooming her, you can have a look. So that's that. Then there are some things that we've acquired or have been using this year that we haven't paid for. And I said I'd include these at the end. Um, they are things that we probably would or might have paid for um, under different circumstances um, and have been getting really good use out of. And they are clothes for her. We've been quite focused on our finances this year. We've been trying not to overspend. So in previous years where I've spent a lot of money on clothes for dogs, clothes for Jess the dog, um, I haven't spent so much this year. She's got a big wardrobe already, so she doesn't need a lot of clothes. Having said that, there are some really fantastic small businesses out there that make clothes for dogs. Um, I will link to a Keeping Your Dog Warm in the Winter video that's got some of our winter wardrobe in it. Um, that are great to support, like definitely, definitely buy dog clothes from small businesses if you can. Um, they're great for your dog, especially if you've got a Whippet or a Sighthound. And yeah, we just love, love keeping it in the community. Obviously, if you've got like, if your dog is not a Sighthound or a hairless breed, you might not need clothes for them or depending on where you live, etc., etc. So like, this is gonna be another one of those how long is a piece of string costs. But um, as you'll know, if you're a Whippet person, um, they do need some kind of clothes to keep them warm in the winter. Next is beds. We have so many beds for Jess. Although like we also sometimes, there's a duvet in the corner of this room on the floor. That's her bed in here at the moment. <laughs> she loves our bed, you know, but we got gifted a really beautiful bed from Omelette this year. I don't know if we would have bought her a bed had we not been gifted it, but it is one of the things that we've got the most use out of. So I do just want to mention it here. We did a campaign with Adaptil for Pet Anxiety Month earlier this year, and they sent us a Thunder shirt and their plugins and stuff, which have been great, especially the Thunder shirt. We've used it a lot. So that's another cost that would have been on here that we'll definitely buy again. And I think that's probably it because we've had like a bit of a frugal year, I would say outside of like 
these core costs. We haven't bought her any collars this year. We haven't bought her any leads this year. Those are all things that like, you know, last year I probably would have spent a bit more money on. So I'll be interested to see. I think I'll make another one of these next year and compare it and see. I'd love to know how this stacks up next to how much you're spending on your dog. Maybe you don't know. I was definitely happier in the dark in previous years. I imagine this might be like a low cost year for us, despite the fact that there were a lot of vet bills. Who knows? I would need to have a look. The thing about it all is, outside of the insurance and the vet bills, you can spend what you want on a dog. Like, everyone will be spending different amounts, I'm totally sure. Some people will be looking at this thinking, oh my god, you spend so much money on your dog. Other people will be looking at it thinking, oh my god, that's nothing, like why aren't you spending more money on her food and treats? Like everyone will be different and that's totally fine. You just gotta do what suits you and your dog. This year has been like a different and a difficult year in some ways because of the health problems she was having earlier in the year. So it's probably not totally representative of what we've done in previous years, but yeah. As I said, I'll be really interested to be here next year doing the same thing again and making a little comparison. I think that'll be quite fun. Thank you very much for checking in. You can find us on Instagram um, at Worried Whip It. I'm over there as well, human.jess. We'd love to hear from you about your own experiences. <laughs> and the costs associated with loving these tiny four-legged friends. Um, so yeah, do get in touch. We'd love to hear from you and thanks for stopping by. Bye.